We are in the midst of the series of What We Believe, talking about the Articles of Faith of the Church of the Nazarene. And Pastor Mark has made this statement, and I think it just continues to ring true, that what we know and believe affects who we are and how we act. And I'm confident the more truth that we get within us, the greater difference we're going to be able to make in the circles that God has placed us in. And we're looking forward to that. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. But if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. Our manual, also supporting the scriptures, helps us understand sin by this definition. We believe that sin came into the world through the disobedience of our first parents and death by sin. We believe that sin is of two kinds, original sin or depravity, and actual or personal sin. We believe that original sin or depravity is that corruption of the nature of all the offspring of Adam, by reason of which everyone is very far gone from original righteousness or the pure state of our first parents at the time of their creation, is averse to God, is without spiritual life, inclined to evil, and that continually. We further believe that original sin continues to exist with the new life of the regenerate until the heart is fully cleansed by the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We believe that original sin differs from actual sin and that it constitutes an inherited propensity to actual sin for which no one is accountable until its divinely provided remedy is neglected or rejected. We believe that actual or personal sin is a voluntary violation of a known law of God by a morally responsible person. It is therefore not to be confused with involuntary or inescapable shortcomings, infirmities, faults, mistakes, failures, or other deviations from a standard of perfect conduct that are the residual effects of the fall. However, such innocent effects do not include attitudes or responses contrary to the Spirit of Christ, which may properly be called sins of the Spirit. We believe that personal sin is primarily and essentially a violation of the law of love, and that in relation to Christ, sin may be defined as unbelief. John Wesley described it as this, the person committing the act must know that he or she is doing wrong, and the act itself violates a law that God has laid down. With all those precautions in place, there is no way sin can be an accidental occurrence. The bad news is, we're born with sin and we sin. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin separates us from God. In and of ourselves, we cannot get rid of sin on our own. The good news for us is we have a redeemer. Romans 3.23 that we quoted earlier, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, the verse that follows that in 24 boldly pronounces, we are justified freely by the grace through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. We can be justified, we can be redeemed, we can be cleansed. The passage in 1 John also presents this to us, just kind of like a package with a bow on top. This is it, this is the good news of the gospel. Good news for sinners like me, good news for sinners like you. 1 John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. John is not telling us that once we are in the light, it's impossible to sin. He's saying that it is possible to not sin. Sin can happen, but once we have a relationship with Christ, sin is an intrusion and not the norm. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus provides us the power to overcome sin. 
Where the power lies, first of all, it's in the ing, the I-N-G. It's in the continuing, the walking, the fellowshipping, the seeking. Our Christian walk is never complete. It's not a one-time thing. A second way is in the word. Psalm 119.11, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. We have to stay immersed in this in order for God to speak to us and show us his light and his ways. Number three, it's in the deep, heavy reliance upon the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. We have to have a connection with the Holy Spirit. There is no way that we can do this thing on our own. We want to and we try and we attempt and we fail and discouragement sits in. And then when we can't do it, we deceive ourselves and say we're not sinning. We have to be connected to the Holy Spirit in order for us to have victory. Number four, it's in the fellowship with other believers. Proverbs 27, 27. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We need Christian fellowship. We need to be around people who remind us of what it's like to walk that victorious life. We need to be able to pray for one another. We need to be able to ask for prayer and then to join with others around us. Number five, it's in staying alert. Romans 6, 11 through 14, these are things that are on our side of the equation, things that we've got to do. Count yourself dead to sin. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Do not offer the, party, the parts of your body to sin. Offer yourselves to God. Sin shall not be your master. God is provided. Remember, we have the redeemer. We have the purifier. We have the person who's going to forgive us but we've got to stay connected to him. Hebrews 12, one, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. Our race is a race of victory, but we cannot do it on our own. Romans 6.23, again, the good news of the gospel says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin is not to hold us down or to keep us to live a defeated life because Jesus Christ died on the cross so that we could be redeemed from those sins. 